noticed Dan didn't have his badges on. So if anyone sees him trying to get lunch without his badges, then you can pull him up on his own policy. Anyway, we hope you um, uh, are not suitably lost. I was uh, the first couple of times I came here, but it wouldn't be a Building Smart Summit if we weren't a little bit lost, hopefully not too lost throughout the week. Uh, but yeah, I just want to welcome you uh, to Singapore as well. My name is Aidan Mercer. I'm the Marketing Director of Building Smart International. And I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about progress with Open BIM, which I think is probably one of the nicest parts of, uh, of my role. So yeah, I just want to thank everybody for being here. I would like to thank Building Smart Singapore, um, Constello, uh, for working with us on this partnership with Build Tech Asia. Absolute professionalism is first class, and it's been really an honor to do that. I'd like to thank my team, the organizing committee as well, and of course, our sponsors who support this, and of course, you, the attendees here, and actually for those online as well, thank you for joining. We're here to talk a bit about Open BIM and some of the progresses we've made. But what do we mean by Open BIM? So not everyone is fully cognizant of what Open BIM actually means. Well, it's about having easy to adopt standards and services that work for users. It ensures that data is usable for, for users. So data has to be usable within daily practice. And it gives users full control of their data. So having full access of your information is really about the, 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 or was really the purpose of Open BIM. And of course, at the heart of it, it's really about interoperability. So allowing collaboration between software vendors. We've got quite a lot of sessions this week around interoperability and actually putting a lot of um, uh, software uh, companies on stage to actually ask them questions related to what their strategies are around interoperability. So this is really a key component of, of Open BIM. But if we think about the context of Open BIM within our industry, we are obviously here to develop global standards and services to make this interoperable, uh, accessible, enduring set of data to improve decision-making, automation, and efficiencies that help us deliver a more sustainable and a, a, a sort of less expensive built environment. So the context by which we operate at Building Smart is very, very important within the context of our industry. And of course, all of you know that very well because you're practitioners within that and you all contribute to this industry um, using these open standards. So let's reflect a little bit about what we've sort of collectively achieved. And this is obviously something I just want to really um, uh, highlight today. In the last 12 months or so, we've had four new chapters joined. These chapters help to ensure that um, uh, standards and services are implemented within country, that they're supported, and that uh, Open BIM becomes uh, a sort of embodiment of that chapter. So four new chapters in Kazakhstan, Iceland, Greece, and Ecuador. It's fantastic to be welcoming them to our network. And we, of course, expect more chapters to join in the near future. IFC 4.3 was officially approved as an ISO standard last year, which of course is a massive milestone for Building Smart. As soon as it gets that level of recognition, we know that it's a, a world-class standard. We also finalized IDS as a standard. So this information delivery specification, of course, is a, a huge milestone for us. And I'm um, sure I can't actually see because the lights are very bright, but just by a show of hands, how many people have developed an IDS in the room? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, a few more hands coming up. Okay. Not as many as I thought, but uh, certainly would recommend that you use IDS and start to work with these uh, standards and services. We also launched an IFC validation service, which is an online platform to um, check the model quality of, of the IFC against the schema. And we also had some updates related to the professional certification program. We published the uh, entry level training. We updated the foundation course content and published learning content for practitioner training. So some pretty big milestones, of course, within the training program as well. We also successfully completed Accelerator Program project. And actually, we'll be hearing from this Feynman project, which many might have um, heard about or even was participating in Valencia last year. We actually delivered a lot of the work packages for that to actually implement Open BIM on one of Europe's largest infrastructure projects. So really nice that at scale, you can actually implement Open, Open BIM um, as such a major project. We also delivered an IFC 5 hackathon. We'll be hearing a lot more around IFC 5 and some of the future standards. And we've also been listening and making our website more, more easy to use. We've been publishing content that supports that and making sure that the, the, the domains and what is published out of there and, the, and specifically the use cases and the industry requirements are also published on our website. Of course, we couldn't do this, though, without our, our members. And these organizations support the work that we do. And this is uh, absolutely vital to continue uh, the work in delivering this progress. So without these organizations, we couldn't do this. So we want to thank them very much for, for their contributions. And of course, a lot of the work that is developed in these domains that we, we have 
a lot of the, the experts that we have contributing to these topics come through these domains. And I just encourage you over the next couple of days to um, actually um, participate, go into these rooms. It may not be a domain that you're familiar with, but go and learn, go and figure out um, what is happening within other domains and actually contribute to these because they're open. We'll also be uh, encouraging future domains, and I believe we'll have, be having our first working group around the energy um, domain as well. So please um, go and uh, interact and start to build uh, the network there. And of course, if you're interested, you can also join and contribute to those domains as well. We also have a growing partnership network as well. So these are really, really important for us to ensure that we are reaching into other uh, industries and other contexts. So these partnerships that span various different disciplines are really fundamental to Building Smart and Building Smart International uh, because we see that as a way to um, engage expertise, to bring more resources to our, um, our community. And of course, having that relationship with these types of organizations, I think is really, really critical. So. We expect this, this number to grow in the coming months and years and, 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 and hope that that brings some, some value. I actually need to create a new slide for this because this is now getting uncontrollable, but it's a good sign, right? So this is more progress with Open BIM. We're seeing more chapters joining. This allows us to have this international reach. Um, of course, this is a key component to the work that we do, but I just want to acknowledge and thank all of those chapters for, for all the contributions they've done for many, many years. And sometimes these are new chapters as well that really want to join the fold. So please welcome new chapters into Building Smart International and make them feel welcome. And of course, uh, I look forward to the next six months in giving a progress on, on this growth as well, because we expect more to join. The chapters have actually been very busy as well, supporting a project that we've been doing around glo global open BIM mandates. So uh, we've just, uh, as of a couple of days ago, published our 2025 edition of global uh, open BIM mandates. If you'd like to check it out, this is a, a document that has been supported again by our chapters, and it's designed to represent Open BIM within country, within projects, to show how, for example, Open BIM, IFC, these open standards are actually used in in country. And we've just been we just added the Dubai example, and uh, Calvin will be running a session tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, so please go and check that one out as well and contribute to that really important topic. But in this context of these standards. We, we develop, we actually call this the Open BIM workflow. And so you'll probably hear this a few times. So I thought I'm, I'd set down how it might look in practice for a user. So if you're a user, you want to utilize something like IDS, you would develop your information uh, requirements using this, um, this format. So this machine interpretable format allows you to create your information requirements. Again, I've always said this, that I created one, so therefore anyone can do it. Uh, if I'm the lowest common denominator, then you can definitely do it too. This will help to develop uh, the information that you need that can be produced as an IFC model. So creating this data set in an IFC format can be produced and you can review and share uh, topics or related to uh, the sort of communication and collaboration using the BCF, the BIM collaboration format. And you can share this using a suite of APIs under the OpenCDE umbrella. You can improve the information, reference different terms and types using the Building Smart Data Dictionary. And you can upload that information to see how valid that IFC, work, uh, IFC model is. So this is what we encapsulate as the Open BIM workflow. So you'll hear a lot of that today. This is essentially what we mean when we, we're making things usable for people. We support that through various programs, these enablers, Open BIM enablers. Uh, if you're developing an IDS, for example, within your industry, you can upload that to our use case management service and share your best practice so that other people can learn from that industry um, how things are done. You can select various software based on the software certification to support your interoperable workflows as well. And you can align your processes using something like the accelerator program and upskill your workforce with the professional certification. So we have this context of the Open BIM workflow and we have these enablers of our programs to support this. A lot of the work that we do, a lot of the progress we do is related to trying to improve a lot of this, these components within that. I mentioned that we had a hackathon. This is actually the, uh, uh, you're the first people to see the sneak peek promo video of, of this. And this was in Budapest uh, last month at the Implementers Assembly. And it was held at the Graphisoft building in, in Budapest. And uh, we invited um, software enthusiasts and people within our implementers forum to actually come and uh, start to exchange uh, ideas and knowledge and, and learn about the, um, uh, the future of IFC and IFC5. Really delighted to say, of course, we'll be hearing more at this summit, but I'm delighted to say that there was these first exchanges in the IFC5 format that actually uh, were done for the first time. So a pretty historic moment. 
However, I would like to sort of caveat that with that we, we see interoperability as having no version number. So we support uh, and develop multiple versions of IFC all at once. So yes, we're developing future standards to future proof the, the, the industry, but at the same time, we're supporting um, users in how they use the standards. So this is ultimately our responsibility as an industry body. There's no single version prioritized and IFC 5, for example, will coexist with other standards and users essentially have the choice of which version they want to use. And this is the uh, element of OpenBIM that uh, has that flexibility uh, built in. So again, uh, very important that we do that. And on that, we of course have other standards that I mentioned earlier, the IFC 4.3 standard, which is now ISO approved. This is ultimately work that we continue to do through the implementers assembly, as you saw there, making sure that vendors support the standard, delivering this uh, wonderful opportunity for infrastructure projects. We develop this on accelerator projects, as I mentioned, the IFC 4.3. We utilize our validation service to check that models comply with the IFC 4.3 standard. We're developing global software certification again to support this and support through the Building Smart Data Dictionary as well. So a huge amount of support going on alongside the, the IFC 4.3 standard. But are you feeling brave? So uh, that's the question I have for you today as well, is if you're interested in learning more about IFC 5, uh, there is a course you can enroll on today. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's free to do, so please uh, consider doing that. You'll get information about IFC 5. You'll test your knowledge, your experience, and start to really um, uh, fully understand how IFC 5 um, uh, uh, may look in the future as well. So please consider enrolling on the course um, and uh, yeah, test yourself. We also mentioned about professional certification and we've obviously been producing globally lots of entry level badges. Hopefully a lot of you have got those. Um, content has been developed through our foundation program has been updated and improved all the time and working on management um, uh, new curricula. So stay tuned on that in development. And of course, we launched the Open BIM Practitioner as well. Um, of course, lots of work being done, uh, led by Celine, uh, Celine Bent from the Building Smart International team, and really uh, fantastic to see some of these sort of um, uh, opportunities for the industry to actually adopt and learn more about Open BIM being made available. And of course, then I would invite you to also feel brave at the summit. If you don't have your foundation certificate, for example, um, please consider taking the uh, foundation exam at the summit. So. For anyone that doesn't know, you can come to this summit and walk away with a certificate of your foundation. If you do not have your foundation uh, a badge, please consider registering. There's a crash course here that you'll be taken tomorrow at 9 a.m. tomorrow uh, in the room just up there with uh, Cornelius, who's the, the chair of G Building Smart Germany and leading the PISA activities. And um, uh, consider trying to obtain your foundation certificate. I think there are limited places, so uh, first come, first serve on registering for that. And now we have some really nice, exciting news to share with you that Evandro, many of you will know, Evandro Alfieri is named the Quality and Delivery Director. So we'll be joining the leadership team at Building Smart International and we'll be really overseeing a lot of the critical um, roadmap initiatives. So it's really important that we add um, some element of uh, expertise and uh, closeness to users to ensure that we uh, can align that with the roadmap that we develop. So Evandro is here, please, please uh, go and talk to Evandro. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very uh, delighted that he can join. We've also just published this morning, uh, I didn't even have time to put the QR code on there, but on our website, you'll see, we've just signed an MOU with Women in BIM. Um, fantastic to be working with this organization. They're actually supporting the final session today, and we're really excited about working uh, with Women in BIM. And um, again, back to our network, growing the network that we can. I'm also delighted to say that this morning we also launched our awards program. So if you want to share your progress with Open BIM, why don't you do that through our awards program? Uh, we will be uh, uh, adjudicating and, and working through the process that, that will culminate in the, um, the final um, awards program at the Berlin Summit. And uh, please do consider submitting your project um, and uh, getting your uh, example of Open BIM uh, into us as well, so we can share that. I'm also really delighted to, to say that in 12 months time, we'll be in Portugal, in Porto. So uh, thank you to the Building Smart Portugal chapter. It's gonna be fantastic that we're gonna be in, in Portugal. I'm told that they do good Porto wine, red and white. So if you if you like that, please do come and uh, sample sample that. But uh, for other reasons, let's continue the, the journey with Open BIM. Uh, we'll do that in Portugal. So great that we'll be um, uh, there as well. So we go from Port, uh, Porto into our future summit in six months in Berlin. And I hope a lot of you can join us in Germany. 
Well, with that, I'm really thank you for your attention and really enjoyed sharing some Open BIM updates. Um, I have one final update that we, of course, have appointed a, a new interim CEO in, in the shape of Jan Saar. And I would like to welcome Jan to the stage and uh, would like to hand over the clicker so he can talk a bit about some of his priorities. Good job.